is Kai Green? To answer that question, I traveled to Kai's hometown of Brooklyn, New York, to find out how a champion is created. Is he born or made? For most men, greatness is a quality that is earned with hard work, study, and perseverance. For bodybuilding powerhouse Kai Green, being a champion requires all these things, but it begins with a state of mind. I arranged to meet Kai here at Fifth Avenue Gym to get to know him and his trainer, Oscar Arden, and begin to get some insight into their methods and philosophy during their last workout before they leave for seven weeks of intense training in Las Vegas. Fifth Avenue Gym is an underground, hardcore, no frills, old school establishment. Kai greets me warmly, and I'm pleasantly surprised when he tells me that he's seen my work. We talk for a few moments, and I'm not surprised to find that he is deeply philosophical about his current challenge. This whole game is about being, being a champion of mind, being in control of your own thoughts. Mind is everything. The most powerful thing on this universe, in the omniverse, is the power of thought, I think. If you look at creation theory and say, you know, the creator spake it and it was, let there be light and it happened, you know, um, I think that's what we do. When Oscar arrives, it's time to get down to business. Tonight is a shoulder workout, delts, as the bodybuilders say. As I shoot, I am immediately impressed by two things. Kai's amazing strength and his intensity. The third thing I notice is the relationship between Oscar and Kai. Oscar doesn't just tell Kai what to do, he goes through the workout with him. There is also an unmistakable fatherly or brotherly attitude that Oscar has towards Kai. It is a training relationship unlike any I've ever witnessed. But I didn't know much about him in the beginning, just somebody that shared the same interests that I shared, you know, and we became friends. As we became friends, I know that he had a lot of potential, 
but he, he, I guess he lacked a lot of the guidance. You know, he would kind of rough around the edges when it came to uh, nutrition and training and um, certain aspects of life, you know. I remember Kai when he was just a little one, when he was competing at the, what was it, 94 Delaware show? Because I was there and I remember seeing him and he was uh, kind of stringy but had nice muscles and I've watched him throughout the years just slowly growing and then all of a sudden growing into one of the best pros in the world. And I always knew he had that potential. I thought so, even back then. Kai Green. I saw Kai Green a long time ago. He was competing probably as a middleweight in the, somewhere in the neighborhood of 176 pounds. And he's small, but he is just put together. Every body part was there. He had sweep on his quads and little waist and a big back. And he posed way different than anybody else. Over the years, Kai has built on his promising framework, adding many pounds of muscle, turning pro in 2004, and winning several major titles, including, most famously, the 2009 Arnold Classic. Despite all of his success, it is clear that he is not taking the Olympia lightly and is grateful for Oscar's presence. Man, honestly, we just got so much riding on this, um, on this, this part of it. You know, I, I depend a, a great deal on, on Oscar, because honestly, this is, um, this is new territory even to me. You know, he's more, really, like a brother, like a younger brother, you know, and I care and I love him very much. You know, my, my mother considers him like a son, you know, my children love him. My wife, just, you know, just amazing. Just um, whether it was bodybuilding or not bodybuilding, you know, we have the same relationship. It just happened that bodybuilding connected us. Everybody on a team has an assignment. A successful team, I think, is successful because the people that they have delegated to carry out specific tasks, they're doing it and not falling short. I do need for him to, uh, to take this to the ultimate level and, and totally uh, devote himself 100% physically, mentally, and spiritually to the task at hand without, you know, involving, you know, any other things, any other elements that come into, that, that you can easily come and interrupt. So it's about being totally focused, you know, and, and dedicated and, and not allow anything to come and take any energy away. That's how it's going to be, you know. workout goes on and on. It is a brutal attack on Kai's shoulders from every possible angle. Each time I think they are done, they begin loading the bar again for yet another exercise. This is one of the longest, most intense workouts I've ever witnessed. And it's only a shoulder routine. I find myself wondering, how does he keep going? Where does the energy come from? The answer I get is surprising. In the midst of all this positivity, 
There is a dark side to Kai's philosophy as well. I find out about it when I ask him about Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman to me is definitely someone that, you know, was worthy of a tremendous amount of respect. Um, I, I think the real Ronnie Coleman, though, I, you know, would probably will definitely never be privileged enough to know. You know, where does a man have to go in order to put 800 pounds on his back and say, I'm going to squat down to the floor and stand up as many times as I can before, you know, I pass out or, you know, blow something out or, you know, just the rage that would have to be there, in there, inside that, you know, to begin to open up and talk about, you know. It comes from rage. You know, this dude put 800 pounds on his back, you know, and squatted down to the floor as many times as he could before he threw up. You tell me, where does this guy have to go? And I said, there's violence in there, there's rage in there. You say, well, you ask me, is it violent? Is, it, is there rage? I'm saying I believe there has to be, because I just don't, until you try to put 805 pounds on your back and squat down to the floor, then you realize, yo, I really have, to, there's something else that has to be motivating me to do that, because there's no way I can do that and say I'm a nice guy. I might be a nasty mother behind the scenes, and I might be ready to really be able to call on that when I need to, and that's what makes me proficient at my job, should it be being a linebacker, should it be being a, a, a man outside on the, on the line fighting in the, for the country? Or, you know, should it make me a good cop? Or would it make me, you know, a good athlete right now? You know, um, I think there's a psychological profile that I think. If you really explore it, it probably would alarm people to think about, it, you know, who this guy must really be. Because you cannot be just a very simple person to explain, a simple person to understand, you know, with that kind of ability. This is the final workout before both of them fly to Las Vegas to train in seclusion for the seven weeks preceding the Olympia. It seems like an excessively long time to me, but Oscar has his reasons. Soldiers go away to Iraq, they have to leave their families, they have to go, you know, that, that's the type of, you know, what they have to do to, to perform. You can't be worried about your wife, your girlfriend, you can't be worried about your bills, you know, you have to you know, focus, you know, on the enemy and attack and destroy and, oh, this is the goal that we have and this is what we have to do. It's, uh, it's, like, a, it's like a camp, it's more like a, like a Bacchus training camp, you know, you get up, you know, you have a meal, your cardio, your training, it, it becomes, you know, it becomes, um, away from distractions, away from drama, away from stress, and just focusing on the, ta on the task at hand. The Mr. Olympia is the place where the biggest, the baddest, and the best IFBB professional bodybuilding champion of the world sits on his throne. When you aspire to become that, to prove that your best efforts can be met with the honor such as that title, um, you know, it's a giant step. It's a giant step. 